Okay, welcome back. This is the second video in the series of modeling in R. And this time we're going to be looking at uh, something that's a bit more like a health economic model. Um, so let's get started. As we had last time, we've got N underscore T is gonna be our number of cycles. This time we're gonna have 40. We've got three states, so healthy, diseased, and dead and we'll have a cohort size of a thousand to begin with. Okay, let's create a vector for our state names. So healthy, diseased, dead. Okay, and now we need to create our transition probability matrix. So you'll remember from the last video, hopefully, that if you want to enter it by row, which is the more natural way when you read it, you have to tell R that you're giving it uh, by row because it will assume by column as the default. And you can tell it that this is gonna be a three by three matrix. So the first line, 0 0.96, 0 0.03, 0 0.01, the second line and the third line in the matrix there for the dead state okay and then as we did before we just tell it what the dimension names are so that when we print it it's going to look nice also something to note is that if r can it will carry over the um the dimension names when you do operations so when you multiply matrices together or add them um, it will try to carry over the state names that you had in a sensible way so here's our transition probability matrix okay now we're going to create as we did before an array for the state membership we'll fill it up with NAs to begin with and the reason was explained last time we want the first dimension to be the number of cycles and the second dimension, which is the columns, to be the number of states. And that first dimension is cycle, as I said, so that's gonna be one to NT. And then the second dimension is state and the labels for that will be V state names. Okay. So when you have a look at that, it's all full of NAs, but it's at least got the row and column labels that we want. Okay. At the start of the model, so in the first row, we have uh, the whole cohort is in the healthy state. Nobody's in the diseased or dead states. So we have another look at the state membership. Now we've filled in that first row, but the rest of it is still NAs. Okay. So now we're going to have the for loop which is us telling R, do these things one by one, iterating from I from two up to NT. Okay, so the state membership in uh, cycle I is equal to the matrix product of the state membership in cycle I minus one with the transition matrix. Okay. Now when we look at state membership, here we go. We've already got our state membership across the Markov model. So what's left to do? Well, now we need to apply some payoffs for this model. So I'll create um, an array or a matrix of the payoffs. And what I'm gonna do is I'll do the costs for the three states first. So 50 per cycle in the healthy state, 1,000 per cycle in the diseased state, and zero per cycle in the dead state. And then the qualities are going to be 0.9 per cycle in the healthy state, 0.6 per cycle in the diseased state, and zero per cycle in the dead state. Okay, but what I'm gonna do now is actually, I'm gonna say, that these are being given by columns. So instead of filling these out um, row by row, so this would be a, 
a two row three column matrix instead I'm providing it by column so it's going to be a three row two column matrix so I'll tell R three rows two columns okay and then the dimension names so that it prints nicely the first dimension so this is what is varying over the rows is the state so I've got the labels for that and then the columns are the payoffs and I've got cost and quality payoffs okay let's have a look at that so you can see what we've built so here we've got um, an array with three rows two columns the first column is the cost according to the state and the second column is the qualies according to the state okay and now you're going to see how we calculate the payoff trace so this is a really nice one-liner i'm just going to take the matrix product of the state membership and this payoff matrix and because i've organized them in this particular way these are conformable matrices this will work and what it would do is for each row of the state membership it's going to do it will multiply that vector by that vector and add it together so that will give us the total cost in that cycle and then it will multiply that row by that column and add it together and that's going to give us the total qualies and it's going to do that for every single cycle so i hit enter and now if we look at that you'll see what we've achieved. So we've got cost in the first column, qualies in the second column, and R has worked out what those dimension names should be from the input matrices for that matrix product. So I think that's pretty neat. And then maybe our final step would be, let's get the column sums uh, and divide it by the cohort size so that we can see the average cost and average qualies. There you go. Pretty simple. Did not take that many lines of code. Have a look at uh, this line and this line in detail to make sure you understand them. Um, you know, if you haven't uh, familiarized yourself with matrix multiplication, I would recommend you do so. For loops are not something that R is generally very quick at doing, whereas matrix multiplication is very quick. Uh, so if you can avoid for loops and you can code things as uh, these are vectorized operations, then that's going to make your code run really quickly. And you get the added benefit that R has worked out what the dimension names for this should be without us ever having to tell it. Okay, enjoy.